Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we're building patches from scratch on the Arturia Micro Freak. So far in the series, we've made a pad and we've made a lead sound, which means that I am now compelled to make a bass sound so that the synth police don't come and arrest me. So the question is, what kind of bass sound shall we make? Now, um, I've covered sort of the basic subtractive kind of classic analog bass sounds on the channel before on the monologue and on the deep mind. And a lot of the techniques there will translate just as well to the micro freak. So rather than doing that, I thought we would dive into one of the other less classic sounding uh, digital oscillators and work with that. And also we'll look at uh, a different configuration for the way that the keyboard responds than some of the previous patches we've looked at as well. So with that in mind, let's build an FM bass. So we're on an initialized patch. And the first thing to do if we're going to make an FM sound, of course, is to change our digital oscillator over to the, where is it? There we go, 2-op FM. So 2-op FM, um, this is a very simple FM setup. If you're interested in learning a bit more about FM synthesis in general, the um, video series I did on the Volker FM kind of, I think, acts as quite a good overview of FM synthesis in general, but basically a 2-op FM uh, synth setup is basically the simplest FM setup you can have. You have a carrier, which is the thing you hear, which you can think of like a, the oscillator that you're hearing. Uh, you've got the uh, single uh, operator, which is acting as the modulator. And that modulator is what affects the timbre um, based on its relationship to the, uh, the carrier. And then we also have feedback on the modulator, which can again change the timbre of the sound, again, based on the relationships between the two operators. Um, Let's uh, tune down a little bit, go down to octaves. I mean, you know, even with the initialized patch, there's it's quite a fun sound, I think. Anyway, uh, let's make it more fun. Uh, so in terms of the controls that we have in our digital oscillator for the two op FM, uh, we're going to ignore wave and actually just go on to timbre first. So timbre is the modulation amount. Basically turn up uh, to make it more harmonically rich, complex sound. Uh, the shape affects the feedback of the modulating operator, which again is going to have an effect on the timbre. Generally, as you turn it up, you're going to get more complex. Also affects the tuning a little bit. As you turn it up, you'll get more complex. Raspy sounds, harsher, and that will also be the character will be affected by the amount here as well. Cool. Um, the final control here is the uh, the ratio between the two operators. Uh, generally speaking, generally speaking. It's not a hard and fast rule, depends on the other settings, but uh, you'll get sort of more fundamental, more, um, I guess, bottom end would be one way of putting it. As you turn it down, there's been lots of places where it doesn't work and it feels out of tune. Then I'll lock in. It's a cool, growly sound. And although it would be tempting to maybe have the ratio set low, for bass sounds, weirdly, quite a lot of the time, especially if I want to be obviously FME, I kind of favor a higher ratio. So there's more kind of twang and um, pluck, almost like a stringy kind of feel to the sound. So let's try tuning it up instead. Obviously that sounds like this lost uh, quite a lot of the bottom end, which it has done to a degree. But we can get that bottom end back by bringing down the, the amount. And it's a really cool bell-like bits along there. And then when the amount's low, we've kind of got back to that sort of fundamental coming through quite strongly. But 
with that kind of upper almost organ tone over the top so if we're going to want to have both the twang but then we want the fundamental coming back round um, we want this timbre knob to be moving for us don't we so let's head into our uh, mod matrix and let's have it affected by uh, our envelope so on the envelope row let's go to timbre click it and let's have it affect um, that amount Let's affect our, let's try to make sure our envelope is actually going to be doing something. So we'll have um, a low sustain. In fact, let's put sustain pretty much down to bottom at the moment. We'll have a shortish decay. we want to be that's very zappy but perhaps if we have a it's probably a sweet spot where we're not just on an edge of that zap the edge of the zap there we go okay we'll be refining these as time goes on but that's that's feeling okay to begin with. So um, let's talk about the uh, standard setup for our envelope. By default, on the initialized patch, the amp mod, light is lit up. And what that means is that the envelope has also been sent to the amplifier envelope. Uh, sorry, the, sorry, the envelope has also been sent to the amplifier, which means if we have an envelope set like this where our sustain is low, by the time our timbre is also set low, the volume of the synth is also going to be low, which might not be what we want for a bass sound, given that that's when our fundamental comes back in and where we get a bit more of our bottom end. So what we can do is we can turn off the amp mod, and what this does is it means that when you press a key, the amp opens fully, and when you release a key, it shuts instantly. So you lose the ability to have like a release to the amp. You can hear there, we compare it. When we have our fundamental, it's really there. And it means that actually we can drop our sustain right the way to the bottom. So we can use our timbre knob to set our sort of baseline, baseline, the, the bottom end of our sound. Um, but now we've got uh, the fundamental coming out there as well. So let's just have a look at the feedback to see what other timbres we can coax out. So we get a bit more raspiness or crunch. find this as, as we go along but that's kind of our sort of starting point so let's have a think about what we can do in order to make this uh, sound a little bit more performable if you like so in the previous patches in this series uh, we've made quite a lot of the keyboard's ability on the microfreak to provide us with this idea of pressure so in the previous um, uh, patches uh, we had lots of things where as you put more of your finger down on the key it would affect uh, the pressure which is uh, in here in the mod matrix and we could route that to various places so we were having it open up our uh, filter cut off or we we're having it affect the LFO and so on over time essentially that mode of pressure uh, approximates the idea of aftertouch but there is a second mode that you can set the keyboard on a per patch basis to to work with where the amount of um, your finger that strikes the key when you first strike the key is kind of set as the pressure and then it doesn't change over time so rather than giving you this approximation of aftertouch you instead get this approximation of uh, velocity that makes for some interesting playing styles. So let's uh, make use of that as we haven't done that in any of the previous patches. So we're going to go into the utility menu here and into preset. And then from preset, 
we are going to scroll down to pressure mode here. And at the moment it's set to aftertouch, we're going to switch that over to velocity like so. Okay, so let's start thinking about how we can apply the velocity to the patch. So the most obvious place to, to apply it is um, to the amount um, or the, the, the timbre, so the amount of modulation on this um, sound. So when I press hard, you get a lot of twang. When I press lightly, you get less twang. So let's think about how we can achieve that. So one way that we can do that is literally by um, sending the pressure, the velocity as it is now, uh, to the timbre knob. So let's give that a go in the mod matrix. So if we go down to pr the pressure row timbre, and we'll just turn that up some, just make it obvious what's happening. Now if I press lightly, as it were, you get the sound we had before. If I press uh, harder, more of my finger, we get lots of metallic attack. Now, obviously, we want to fine tune the amount of metallic attack, uh, but you can hear the difference there. Now, there is, however, an issue with approaching this this way. So have a listen to the sustain of the note. So bear in mind that this is an attempt at a bass sound. When I do it lightly, once that envelope is finished, we've got lots of fundamental. We've got that low end. Lovely. Now, if I play hard, because we've increased the uh, amount overall, we're not coming back down to that point where the amount is very low and therefore we're getting lots of fundamental. In fact, we're losing bottom end when we play harder, which is not what we want. So um, I'm going to turn that down and we're going to try a different approach that hopefully will be a little bit more um, successful. So what we really want in this case is not to change the amount of the timbre based on the velocity. What instead we want to do is change the amount that the envelope is affecting the timbre based on the velocity. Now, uh, in the last two videos I did in the series, I didn't actually know you could do this because I hadn't read the manual properly, but this is um, something that we can do inside the mod matrix. So we know with our assignable uh, entries in the mod matrix, we can hold down the button, we can twiddle a knob, and then it's that knob that's going to be affected by this column in the mod matrix. But what I didn't realize you can do is you can actually have um, one of the assignable entries in the mod matrix affect another part of the mod matrix. So what I want to do is I want to say assign one um, is going to affect how much the envelope is affecting the timbre. So the way we do that is that we hold down the assign one button, and then we move our mod matrix light over the top of the one we want to affect. Okay, so now assign one is going to affect how much the envelope is affecting our timbre. So first things first, let's go back to our timbre here. And what I want to do is go back in here and set the amount, which will be essentially the minimum amount that I want. So when I press the key very lightly, so we'll turn it down. Still want a little bit of movement. Maybe just like that. So there's still just a little bit of uh, twanginess at the top, but not a whole much. So it's a whole, whole, a whole lot rather. So I've set that at uh, twenty-eight point five. So if we now go down to our um, our pressure row and onto our assign one, which is now going to affect how much the envelope is affecting the timbre, and we'll turn that up. Um, so I had it on fifty something. So I put this for about thirty um, to begin with. Uh, so if I play lightly, as in not much of my finger, get that sound. If I play harder get the twang at the front end, but we still come back down to that bassy sound, which is what we want. Okay, so I like this idea of the velocity, the pressure affecting other areas of my sound. So what else can we do? What else makes sense if I play the key um, lighter? Well, I think one thing that would make sense is if the attack was a little bit longer, so it was a little bit of a softer attack when I played lightly and then back to being a strong attack when I play hard. I, 
think that'd be pretty neat. So let's think about how we can achieve that in the mod matrix. So what we're saying here is when I play lighter, I want the attack to be higher. So that's a weird way of approaching things in the mod matrix. So let me put this a different way. When I play harder, I want the attack to be lower. I know I'm saying the same thing, but it's a slight semantic difference. And this is actually the way around that we would do it in the mod matrix. So what I want to do actually is I want to set my attack at its longest for my lightest touch, which is something like that. And then what I'll do is I will assign my assign number two to my attack knob like that. And then what we want to say is that as the pressure goes up, this needs to go down. So what we do in our, um, let's make sure we're selected assigned to, what we do in our um, mod matrix is rather than have a positive amount, which will make it go longer, uh, the harder I press, we want it to be a negative amount. So when I do the full pressure, we get that nice attack, but a softer attack. Okay, so I'm quite liking this sort of slow attack, almost quite wistful. So yeah, let's make it longer at its extreme. Yeah, I like that. So what I think might be interesting is to make these um, longer attack ones have a little bit vibrato maybe, so it's almost... Almost kind of uh, fluty, stringy at the top there maybe. So um, let's think about how we can do that. So first thing we want to do if we want to create vibrato is we want to have our LFO affecting our pitch. Probably just a little bit, just set it one to begin with. And let's turn the LFO sync off and turn it up. But when I play it hard, I don't want uh, that vibrato. I want it to be a big, strong, impactful tone. So um, let's think about how we can achieve that. It's kind of like what we're doing with our attack. What we're saying is that when we um, play harder, when the pressure is harder, we want the LFO to affect the pitch left, uh, less, sorry. So uh, we're going to have to do a similar trick. Uh, so we want our assigned three. If I hold that down and bring that over to the LFO pitch, now assigned three is going to affect uh, that. So if we want to make sure that our um, pitch wobble disappears altogether at the maximum velocity, we want to look at what it's set at, at the moment, which is one. And then we'll go down to our assigned three on our pressure, so when we hit it as hard as possible, we want to reduce it by the same amount, so we set that as minus one. So now if we play... Lightly, we get that vibrato. If we play semi-lightly... We get nothing, but when we play hard, it goes all together. Okay, so we're kind of in the home straight part of the patch. So let's look at some of the fine tuning elements. Uh, let's revisit some of the choices we made early on and make sure they're still working in the context of the patch as is now. So I think the first thing to look at is actually the FM kind of stuff. So make sure that our ratio amount and feedback still works for us. We'll start with the ratio because I'm willing to be wrong about the ratio. We had it set quite high, but perhaps now in the context of like the way things are attacking and so on, it might not be the right choice anymore. So, so let's um, tune that down. Do we find another in tune ratio? That I think.
think is actually better. Uh, we've still got quite a lot of that twang, but it's just a little bit more bassy, which I which I do like. Okay, so let's check the feedback and the amount. Um, so we bring the feedback up. You can get more of that sort of crunch. It kind of sounds like one of those uh, old Sound Blaster sound cards. People of a certain age and certain gaming preference might <laughs> recognize that sound. Maybe that's a little bit much, or maybe actually, if we turn the amount down, perhaps we'll have a maybe change how much that envelope is opening up, which is on there. Turn that down. I've kind of made it more cheesy, but I kind of like it. More feedback, less amount. Try on the lower octave. Yeah, cool. Yes, uh, and I think finally we should we should uh, we shouldn't. Uh, aim to be a FM purist here because, of course, this is uh, has an analog sort of output part. So let's think about using the filter maybe to round the sound off a little bit. Maybe have the filter open up a little bit with with the envelope maybe resonance. So now that feedback makes more sense. In fact, we may even bring in a bit more. Maybe we have the amount open a bit more. Let's check our uh, decay time here. with it moving slower, more plucky, make it shorter. I'd go either way with that. They both have a place, don't they? Yeah, it's one of those patches where that decay kind of works. wherever we have it. That filter has completely transformed the, the sound instantly. But I like it. So of interest, let's see how this sound um, is on the high registers. What if we add some glide? We've ended up in kind of a cheesy place, but sometimes cheesy is good. This makes me think of uh, uh, Doom, the original Doom. A sound blaster sound card. That's not right. Yeah, maybe we bring that resonance down so it's not steaming so much top end. This is landing in a really fun place, I think. 
I think there's lots of things we could experiment with pushing a little bit further. I think getting that decay just right, I think we could maybe make those long attacks even longer. Uh, I think that might be a really fun thing to do with the lower. As long as we can still get to a point of getting the uh, attack working nicely. I just need to stop. Yeah, I, there's a there's a there's something to this patch, and it's cheesy, but in a, in a way that as we're refining it, I'm just really enjoying it. Anyway, I think we should leave it there because it's we're getting to the point where we can just keep tinkering with this uh, forever and ever. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, make sure you leave the video a thumbs up and ensure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming Synthy fun on the channel. Now that I've covered the bread and butter of lead, pad and bass, I'm open to suggestions for other types of patches you'd like to see on the Micro Freak. Uh, do let me know in the comments if there's something that is particularly interesting to you and I'll see what I can do about it. Uh, but otherwise, thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care.